All right, everyone, it is interview time, and we are here with these wonderful humans from the Desire on Fire podcast and also retreats and just Desire on Fire because you do so many wonderful things. Amy Batuski and Ellie Montgomery. You already heard something about them in the intro. Not Patuski, Batuski. Did I say Patuski? Right. Sounded like That's Patuski. Right. You said it right. Oh, no, you said it right. Oh, I heard Patuski. I was like, oh. Honestly, <laughs> people do say that. You guys <laughs> do say that sometimes. I don't know why, but you didn't. You didn't say that. Uh, well, okay. people do that with April's name. They call her uh, Lamb Lamb Lambert Bert instead of Pert. Uh, yeah. yeah, Lambert. Yeah, Lambert. Oh, so we're opposites. Okay. Yeah, we're switching. I didn't mean to interrupt. The that, I just heard. I was like Patuski. No, it's Batuski. Batuski. But Patuski. <laughs> but, but I really appreciate you looking out, April. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah she's she's looking, looking out. out. I got you. But she, she Amy loves it. it. She loves all Amy's and Ellie's. So she's looking out for the common good. Appreciate anyone that begins their name with a vowel. I am on board. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> we made it in yes you're in the inside club of uh stream of sex love so anyways as uh, just so our, our listeners have already heard a little bit about you in the intro but we like to always start the podcast with an invite for you to tell us how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality i'm a celebrity please elaborate on how you got into this field of sexuality oh God. Well, wow. that could be the whole podcast. <laughs> we will do our best because we love to tell stories. So we, and we love to tell long, drawn out, detailed so stories when we have the chance, but as potent, potent as possible. possible. So we met in New York City when we were in our early 20s and we were both into personal growth and doing different retreats and programs. And we met and we were friends and our relationship was based off of complaining about men. And we would be like, where are all the good men? And how come we are not meeting any? And <laughs> what is wrong with these guys that we're dating? And you can um, imagine how our love life and sex yeah. life looked. <laughs> barren, barren, mm. and uh, dry, dry desert. Yes. And um, and so we, yeah. And then Amy moved to LA and I, we had, she was a coach. I had a health and wellness business. So we were nowhere in this field, never intended to be in this field. No. Um, thought that was like the furthest possibility. Um, I mean, I feel like, I feel like April wins in the furthest possibility <laughs> from like environmental <laughs> law. I mean, sorry, that's fair. Health, wellness, yeah, it's kind of adjacent. 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 I just mean in how, um, how much I struggled in, yeah. in this area and felt, felt broken. Um, I, you know, really struggled to have orgasms and, and had a lot of shame about using a vibrator and using it with partners and felt like, like I wasn't having what I saw in the movies, you know, where they would come at the same time. And it was all, I was like, well, I want that. <laughs> and I used to fake orgasms and it was a real, like, just, I had just had a lot of shame. So I um, never thought I would be in this world, but when I was, it was 2016, I stumbled upon a class where they taught orgasmic meditation. Mm. Oh, me. ever, oh. oh. Yeah, you know yeah. um, yes. but we made different sounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't ohm during that. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Not home. I, I found orgasmic meditation and I um, went to a course there and I ended up meeting my now husband at that course. Great place to pick up a guy. Uh, yeah. And we, I had a sexual spiritual awakening through over the next five years and really started on this path of like conscious relating you know, like, like I had, I had had very unconscious relating, you know, like very much in my patterns and getting drunk and going on dates and having drunk sex. And, and I really started on this path of getting actual tools for deeper connection and being, being able to be my authentic self and like ask for what I needed and, um, communicate things that weren't working and, and really, just started to get to know myself on a whole other level and then bring that into this incredible partnership that I was creating with, with, um, with Rob, who's my husband. And, um, yeah, it's just been an unbelievable journey. And Amy, she can tell her story, but she saw, we got engaged after two months. Oh, wow. My uh -huh. pussy it's, a wild. it's quite a story. We won't go into the whole thing, but my pussy just woke up and knew what she wanted. And I was like, this is my man and this is happening. <laughs> and um, Amy saw me post about it on Facebook. And I was 
distraught because I was like, you are <laughs> leaving the man hating club. Okay. What is happening? Right. I you love traitor. the honesty. I love that. <laughs> I was like, you are a traitor. Where did this man come from? And I like was trying to stalk him and Rob doesn't use social media. So he had like one photo and I was like, who is this guy? He's Why not are real. <laughs> yeah, basically, I'm like, he, he, they were in South Africa because he was living in South Africa at the time for 10 years. He'd been living there. I'm like, why are you in South Africa? Where did this man come from? I talked to you like a couple of months ago. Like I was so, you know, it was so out of left field and that I immediately we got on the phone and she's like, okay, you got to start examining and, and, and like exploring orgasm and orgasm meditation and other practices like it. And I just, I was like, okay. Like, and like she said, I had done all this personal development work. I actually was raised in a family that really, really prioritizes personal growth and introspection. And so it was not, nothing new to me, but around intimacy and orgasm and like getting naked or pantsless in front of people. I was like, no, like, no, thank you. I don't want to touch that practice with a 10 foot pole. And I, but I saw that she was so happy and like, she'd started this relationship and I'm like, okay, there's something in this. So I went, I started going to different classes and retreats and courses focused on sex, intimacy, orgasm, uh, and eroticism and just started down the path and uh, fully like major wake up major like I went from being turned off in sex and relationships very turned on in my life I would say like very ignited in my life um but very turned off in the area of of sex and, and relationships and I and my I my body turned on and I just like became a magnet I started feeling my feelings I started thawing out where I had been frozen. Like my ex-partner, he referenced me as an ice queen when he first met me before all this work. Cause mm, I was yeah, like, that. yeah, but this was after. And, 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 and I was like, it's true. Like at, now looking back, I'm like, I don't even take offense to it because I'm like, I was so frozen. Like I was so frozen and frozen with men, like very icy. Right. And so he said it affectionately because we were talking about how much I had changed and I really was so icy with men and not just mostly just with men, but like at different times with different people. And I couldn't really feel, feel it all. And I was very high. Like I, I lived very much in the light, you know, like very love and light, very much in the up, very high, very, you know, without drugs, but just like, I really like being up you know? And so to go into, to start going into and excavating my darkness and more of the depths of my body and my body sensations, my emotionality, my pain, my shame, I totally transformed into a whole different version of myself. Mm. And yeah. And I mean, it, I haven't stopped, you know, that was, that was seven years ago, six or seven years ago and mm. haven't stopped on this self-discovery journey, especially around intimacy and sex. And, um, and then we started incorporating it into our work in 2018. Um, Amy came to me and was like, let's host a retreat. And, uh, you know, we, we had been on this deep dive journey, just learning and doing retreats and, and, um, you know, having our own healing journeys. And then we were like, yeah, let's, let's host a retreat. And we had our first retreat with seven women in, 2018 yeah. and um just yeah, over just four continue years to, to expand and we now lead a annual event we had 250 women there in, yeah. in October oh, awesome. wow yeah we do like sensual movement That's everyone's amazing. in their lingerie yeah. it's so fun it's and our whole community is focused on sex sisterhood oh. and um sensuality sisterhood and and relationships yeah I love that. So I was going to say for all of those folks that are out there in, in the world of dating and in the, in, especially when it comes to heterosexual relationships, I'm like, go to an orgasmic meditation retreat, apparently, because you can maybe meet the love of your life or maybe yeah. for the dude too. I, I, 
I was thinking medi- like the orgasmic meditation retreats would be like, oh, like Yoni oming. And so I didn't picture dudes there, but like, I love the fact that you met your partner there. I love that. Yeah. So I was like, oh, well, they don't have retreats anymore. They, they, they don't have like programs and retreats the way that they used to, but the practice of course is still alive and well, because it's just a practice that you can do at home. And there are lots of people who are trained in being able to train couples. And, um, because it is a partnered practice, you just need one person with a clitoris. Mm-hmm. So you can do it with a man or a woman and, you know, of any gender and someone stroking the other person's clitoris. And it was, it was such an awakening mm-hmm. practice to begin sitting there for laying there for 15 minutes, having my clitoris stroked. Uh, I was like, well, I told you my reaction to hearing about, I was <laughs> like, no, I'm not doing that. And when I finally opened to start practicing it, all of my shit came up, right? Like my conditioning, how I sounded, how do I smell? How does my pussy look? How am I, am I making the right noises? Am I like feeling this right? Am I supposed to be feeling differently? Am I supposed to be having climaxes? Am I like all of that shit came up and receiving, receiving this, this attention, this like stroking of my clitoris, like there's everything came up that I had to face. Well, and there's, yeah, wait, I, what, so wait, I just want to, because I want to give context to listeners. Yeah. This feels like a continuation because we just recorded for their show right before. So I feel like we're telling stories like as a continuation. So if you haven't done so, we we already told you about them in our bio, but you have to go and check out their podcast, which is Desire, which oh. is Desire on Fire, because we just recorded with them and it was such an amazing exchange because we we talked about so much stuff and Ellie I don't want to uh I, I definitely don't don't want to interrupt your thought process <laughs> but I have a question after Ellie is finished and I just want to encourage everyone because it is something that this is feels like a continuation conversation it is. It's, no, it, it, yes. yeah it totally is and it's so related yeah I was just gonna say that I've learned um kind of a variation on this practice from different people. So Layla Martin, who's an amazing sex educator. She's been on our show many times. We love oh, her. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. Shout out Layla. I, <laughs> we, we did her Epic Lovers. She has like a course um, my husband and I did, and she teaches like Yoni and Lingam massage mm-hmm. and Kim and Nami. I'm in a course with her right now and she teaches it as, as well. And it's kind of just like slowing down and bringing like really loving conscious touch to your partner's genitals. Right. And for me, it was so deeply transformational because I had a lot of shame about the way that my pussy looked and, you know, just, just like I could like masturbate, but I didn't want to like, look at, look at, look down there. (laughs) And, um, and so, and I'll never forget, you know, this brought up like such amazing conversations with my partner where he was like, I love the way that your, that your vulva looks. And I was like, what, you know, I'm like shocked. And he's like, yeah, it's, it's like beautiful. And the, the things that I was embarrassed about, like, he's like, yeah, it's meaty. And I like, love, I was like, ew, like, really? Like you like that about it? It was mind blowing to me. Cause I think we get taught that our, you know, pussies should look a certain way and they look a certain way, you know, in porn, which is also beautiful, but n- there's a huge variety of right. the way that women's genitals can look and men's. And so it's been this very transformational journey for me to like, let him see that, you know, just like soberly in the daylight, like with not, you know, and yeah. So I just wanted to add that, that it's an amazing practice that a lot of different people teach, you know, variations of. Yeah. It was like a gateway practice for us, Mm -hmm. right? Learning orgasmic meditation, which is one form of it's a pussy stroking practice. Right. And then learning that was like, it just opened our, I was like, Whoa, there's all these different practices, conscious practices involving your genitals that you can really bring into your sex practices and your relationship, you know, whether it's massage or other things that you, that there's unlimited types of practices that you can do that will awaken different things or sensitize different parts of you, or have you access new levels of orgasmic energy and, and, you know, heights. Well, uh, okay. We're going to get into a lot, lots of that. And I, and I love that because (laughs) orgasms, they can be the ultimate for uh, people's pleasure. We're not into saying anything is 
it's not something that is the end all be all. It's not like yeah. the, the goal. It's like, yeah. it, it's a bonus. But my, yeah. my, so my question is, because it's going to lead into another question that Amy has is, so we're talking about desire and fire. So what does it mean to live a life that's led by desire? Like people can want things, but what does it mean when you li- live a life that has the desire that's on fire? Yeah. yeah. So for me, what it means is that when I started to really get in touch with my, so we believe that our pussies are our like GPS. And when I started to get in touch with that part of me, because I used to live from the neck up, you know, it was like, I used to live from the neck up, right? It was just like what my head told me to do. That's what I did. Lots of thinking, lots of overanalyzing. And when I started to really get in touch with my sexuality and my pussy and my pleasure, something woke up in me that I did not have access to before. And so that started to, as I started to pay attention more to her, to listen to her, to connect with her, it was like, she started to guide your pussy, me. Your pussy, your pussy is her, pussy, right? Okay, my pussy, yeah. yeah. Wait, <laughs> making sure, just in case anyone's yeah. not paying attention. Are you talking about Amy or yeah. like, what's yeah. going on? <laughs> yeah. My pussy, my pussy. <laughs> started to to guide me places that my head was not always necessarily immediately on board with. Mm-hmm. And my favorite example is that so I met my husband, we got married very quickly as or engaged very quickly as I shared and then all this conditioning kicked in. And I was like, "All right, we're we need to have a wedding." You know, that's the next step. Like you get engaged and then you have a wedding. We started planning this, this wedding in New York city. And my mom was all over it. And it was like the flowers and the thing. And it just felt so heavy. And, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of girl, like I always dreamed about a wedding. I was like, yeah, of course I want a wedding, you know, but the reality of it just felt off. It was like, I was not turned on about it. I was not excited. It felt like a burden. It felt heavy. And a friend of mine at the time reflected to me, he was like, what, you know, I'm like sharing. I'm like, this is so, I don't know what to do. He's like, what's keeping you from canceling it? This was a mentor. Okay. I just want to, this isn't just like a a friend. Okay. This was a mentor at the time, very steeped in this work. Okay. So fully holding the pole of desire. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he, he really, this isn't just like your friend on the street because yeah. no friend would say that okay Very true or if um, they did you wouldn't listen you'd be like um, shut the fuck up <laughs> yeah, 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 right. no random friend yes, very this is a different context important, it's an important, important context important context yes, yes. It sounded yes. like you said mentor with the pull of desire. So I lo- I was like, wait, okay. I was no, like the mentor was, with the pull of desire. Was was really like, okay. <laughs> holding the energetic pull yes. of desire and <laughs> guiding, following it. Guiding me on my path of living a life from desire, which, which you really to just means, that. You can't just yes. be friend. Thank you. Yeah, Thank like, you. Important. Friend. Important. <laughs> Trying to be potent. Guiding me to live a life led by my deepest truth which is another way that we, we talk about it, right? Desire, deepest truth, intuition, your, your body, inner knowing, inner knowing. So he's like, what's keeping you from canceling it? I'm like, what? Cancel my wedding? Are you kidding me? Like 300 right. people have invitations. What the fuck? Yeah, my mom would exactly. be pissed. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's now, it. The invitations had been sent by a paperless post. So we weren't that committed. Apparently. But there to care about the environment. Good job. Yes. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. But your venue had been booked, right? Yeah, the venue was yeah. booked. Yeah, we the date was set. Deposits. The date was set. I booked their flights. Oh, yeah. It was a big deal. Oh, yeah. And I I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, this wedding sounds like it's off, meaning it's not on. You don't feel alive about it. You don't feel excited. Like, it's 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 not resonant. resonant. Do you really want an off wedding? really had to sit with that one. <laughs> and my husband and I, you know, really, really sat with it. And we were like, yeah, this just, this does not feel right to us. And this is, this is our commitment. Like, this is what we're trying to learn is how to live in a way that is for us and trusting that that is going to ultimately serve everyone. We don't need to like force ourselves to do these things. That's like just to please others. Ultimately, I'd be doing it like for my mom and I don't want to live that way anymore. I know, I know where that got me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and so, so we did end up canceling it and it was really, 
really tough to go through at the time, like to have those conversations with my parents. But what opened up on the other side of it was all of this energy and like, you know, fresh kind of momentum to put into the things that I really cared about. And I ended up going on this incredible retreat at the time where I learned like literally the body of work that I now teach. Mm. And so this is just an example of what it can look like. And that when we are willing to say no to the things that we're doing out of obligation, um, that we are like not, not a hell, not, not a yes to. And I don't mean like you have resistance to it. Sometimes we have resistance to things that actually are aligned. aligned. Yeah. I'm talking about the things where it's like, I am clearly just doing this out of obligation and expectation when we're willing to have the hard conversations and, and, you know, just walk through that portal. What opens up on the other side is like, then what's truly meant for you can come in. Yeah, it's like, so that's what yeah, it looks like you're talking about like making space for things like you're, you're listening to like your gut instinct and your body and your intuition beyond your head but you're also like creating space for something more authentic or bigger yeah. or true to you to happen absolutely yeah absolutely mm-hmm. yeah and it's it's an it's a taboo way to live right because we live in a culture that we're doing things for everybody else's you know satisfaction or their um you know, it's their, their standard or their expectation, right? It, you, you get accolades for that, right? You get celebrated for that. It's like what your parents want. you get the grades your parents want, or you get, you do the sport that your parent, your family, you know, or you take on the family business or whatever the thing is. These are just examples, but that it tends to be really affirmed, right? And then to do things based on your inner knowing, your inner guidance system, your pussy, your, you know, whatever you, you choose to, to base that, um, your intuition from where, if you're leading your life from that place, it's probably going to be messy and people may be upset about it. And we love the saying, when you stop people pleasing, people aren't pleased. Mm -hmm. And it's true. Right. And so we have a program called pleasure mastery. It's our flagship four month program for women. And it's a lot of really intense, rigorous inner work and shadow work and working with your victim consciousness and looking at the patterns and mechanisms in your relationships that are not serving you. And it's not particularly pleasurable. It's kind of painful and excruciating to look at, but on the other side of it is pleasure, right? What naturally shows up in the face of shedding the obligations and expectations and the places that you're living to please others exclusively, pleasure shows up. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we see a lot with women, you know, women who we work with is they come in and they've like fulfilled the checklist, Mm -hmm. right? So they like have the, the, the job, they have the partner, they have the house, maybe they have the kids, they have like these things, the degree, the things that they are like checking off that they, you know, have always envisioned. It's like, if I get these things then I'm set, then I'm good. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, but I have all these things and I'm like having zero sex and I'm hate my body and I'm disconnected from my partner. Yeah. And so Mm -hmm. in our experience, like this conversation about what do you actually desire? What do you want underneath, like outside of all these things you've been told that you should want or that you need to accomplish? That's where women's turn on actually lives. Cause it's not just, as you know, it's not just about like what's happening in the bedroom, Mm -hmm. right? It's like what's happening in the rest of your life (laughs) that tends to be just as important for feeling like turned on and ignited and alive. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this brings me to a question about the differentiation. How does this vary from sex, business, or other areas of the life? And also, can I live a life led by desire if I have five kids, six cats, and three full-time jobs? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, Uh totally. Okay. So wait, you asked, how does it like, where where is this relevant, right? In like sex and business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So good. So often women come to us and they they don't even know like what they desire. 
you know, they're kind of like, what do you mean desire? Because like, I don't know what I want. People can tell you what they don't want I, all the time, right? They're yes. like, I don't want to go to McDonald's. Yes, I don't yes. want to be in this state. And I don't yeah. like my life like this, but yes. it's hard yeah. to tell you what they want. I know this because right. I hear people all the time. Yeah. Like, what do you want? They're like, I don't know. Right. I want no. Burger King. But I don't know what I, what I want. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, one of, so common. One of the sayings that, what, that one of our teachers said is um, underneath every complaint is a desire. And so it's just a helpful frame, right? It's like, okay, if you're complaining or if things aren't going well, or if you're, you know, focusing on what's wrong, it's actually a good indication, right? To look at what's underneath that. And it's way more vulnerable, right? It's so much easier to complain about what's not working. And when you actually slow down and you put attention on what you truly want, it is fucking vulnerable, right? Because then you're putting yourself at risk of not getting it right? It's like, if you're just complaining, there's no risk. Things just suck. But if you're actually opening to share the desire, letting someone know, right? Letting people in on what you want, then you're, you're susceptible to not getting it, to being rejected, to losing it. So when women come to us and they're like, I don't even know what I want. Like, I'm so just living for my kids or for my partner, or for my work, for my boss, whatever. We really invite them to start small, start small, even just like every day, whether it, with your meals, with what you want to wear, with how you want to spend your hour of free time or 10 minutes of free time, if you have a lot of kids or right, a little break between work and, and coming home, can you tune in? And I, it helps me to just close my eyes and just tune into my body for a minute and just take a few breaths. And normally if I do that, the answer is there. Like something arises, but I don't even, people don't normally take the time to even slow down enough to listen to our bodies, right? And the answers are really there. So this is totally relevant in any area of life, because if we take the time to slow down and tune in to our bodies, to our pussies, to, you know, gut, gut, heart, pussy, wh wherever you want to tune in, right? And you give yourself a moment often it's right there. You know, it, I, sometimes it's helpful for people if I give them, like if they're choosing between things, I say, what feels, makes you feel lighter? What makes you feel more expanded or what makes you feel heavy or contracted? If you can feel into that when you're choosing, that could be some, just to practice, right? Just to work the muscle and, and then go from there, start practicing these things. And so even if you have many kids or you have multiple jobs, it's about tuning into that. And that will then dictate how you communicate with your kids, how you're taking care of yourself when you're with your kids, right? Are you taking breaks? Are you nourishing yourself? Are you asking for help from family or friends? Are you making sure you have some time for a bath, right? Or just little things and same thing at work. Are you tuning in? Are you asking for what you need? Are you setting boundaries? Are you leaving at a time that feels honoring to you? Are you overworking and right? How can you continue to tune in and, and advocate for your desires even when it feels vulnerable. And I like using the word excruciating because that is how it actually feels. It can feel super like, oh my God, I cannot ask for that. I cannot say that. I cannot admit that I want that. And even if it's like, uh, I want like something else for dinner, right? It's like, we're so conditioned. We don't want to admit that we don't like it or we want it differently. Same thing in the bedroom. It can feel humiliating. It can feel excruciating. And it's being willing to work with the discomfort and risk being rejected or not getting it and asking for it anyway, not from entitlement or expectation, but just from a genuine vulnerability and a willingness to receive it. It's mm -hmm. so strange to me that we're animals, mammals, and that we've evolved so much to communicate in a way that we're so fearful of the reaction, not that we'll be killed, but that we'll be unloved. Yeah. And that to me is such a mind fuck because it's like, wow, I won't speak to what I really need, not because I won't be fed or or nourished or because right. maybe I won't get fucked or maybe someone will think I'm weird or maybe they'll think I'm ugly or maybe they'll think I smell like that to me is such a weird thing. It's like you go on the savanna of, of or the Sahara. What is it? Savannah, Sahara. I always mix those two up. Uh, like you're on, you're on the you lived in South Africa for a while, Ellie. So you can tell me about the terrain but you were with wild animals. They'll fucking eat you. They don't give a shit. Right. But why can't we speak to our needs when it comes to what we want? I don't know. Something to contemplate. And yeah. Yeah. not, a, not, a, but I have a question. That's <laughs> I, mean, I just want to say a quick thing about that. Cause I actually, I have a different, a little bit of a different, I just, I think it's actually normal, healthy human 
instinct to want to belong to the tribe. Mm -hmm. Like that actually is a part of our survival, totally. right? Like historically has been like, we need to be accepted and loved and in the tribe. The thing that, that I, it's like this wire that I think is crossed for people is that they think that if they're honest and actually ask for what they want, it's going to scare people away, be like, you know, un unlovable, be like too much. And they'll be kicked we, out. <laughs> we're really like taught that through the media, you know, I think is like, be, be so skinny, be perfect, be all these things. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's part of the place where it comes from. And so, yeah, in my experience, when I'm willing to risk and share, like, I'll never forget telling my husband for the first time that I had been faking orgasms and coming clean about that. Good job. And I was, Way to go. Thank you. That's thank heavy. You. And it's really empowering that to others that you can, yes. you can feel comfortable enough with your partner to yeah. disclose that. Well, it was, it, quite, it was, it was a journey and I, and I definitely had support and I had been faking them with him. And I realized at a certain point I have got to come clean about this or I'm <laughs> going to have, you know, a fucked up sex life for, you know, potentially my entire life. I don't want that. But I was so afraid, deeply afraid that he was going to leave me. Did he like, say, what am I doing wrong? Or what was his approach to that? Because that's, that's the one thing that people can go right. to. If you, right. if you do disclose a piece of potentially threatening information, threatening, yeah. meaning, oh, this could threaten the ego, or this could threaten mm -hmm. the, the, the life that they thought that they had with you, the sex life that yeah. they the thought that they had, how was, what, what was the exchange that happened after you disclosed this information? Well, I was really clear when I shared it with him that it was my stuff that had me do that. Yeah. And I had done it in past relationships. And I think anytime so, that we're faking, right. It's about us. It's like my unwillingness to, well, God, there's so much in this, but it's like, for me, it was, I didn't even give him a chance to really pleasure me or give me an orgasm. Cause for me, it was too much to receive. And this is the other thing is that women have, a, you know, I mean, all people, but um, we work a lot with, with women and people with vulvas. And if you have in our experience, a lot of women have a having this ceiling, like an amount they can receive and anything they hit the ceiling and then they're like, I can't receive more, you know? So we experience this, right? When women are like receiving self, receiving oral sex. And it's like, you don't even know why you're doing it, but you're like, okay, time to stop. Like I or, can't, or you're thinking about the groceries and it's mm -hmm. all, those are both matching check out, things, right. To just check out or not receive it fully. So for me, when I first met him, it was like too much for me to receive his love, his attention, the sex. And so it was a way for me to like cut it off. You know, it's like, okay, I came, I can't receive anymore. Like let's be done. <laughs> and so I wasn't even giving him a chance to, to really pleasure me. And I wasn't giving myself a chance to see, you know, what could evolve here. And also, you know, for me, because in the past, I it, I felt like I, it took me too long to have an orgasm. And it was like this whole thing. I just wanted to avoid it. Mm -hmm. And so I recognized that that was my stuff. And when I shared it with him, I came from that place. And I just, I shared that it was my stuff, right? So like, this is, this is me. This is, uh, you know, I've done this in the past. And, um, I don't want to do it anymore. And, he, you know, he was just really grateful. He was like, I'm, you know, I'm so glad that you told me this. I don't know if he had any, any ego stuff come up maybe, but I think for him, it just felt like now we can actually have a real sex life. Like now we it's can untrue. get real. And his perspective was like, everybody lies, you know, but the fact that you came clean, now I can trust you, you know, now we can like move forward from here. And it just deepened our intimacy and our connections. So, I feel like you were bluffing so like a poker player. You were like bluffing. You're like, that feels great. And you probably felt <laughs> great, but you're like, but I didn't have a full orgasm. But that's so exactly. many people. I mean, especially Volvo owning people. And I personally, we were on, so we were on your show talking about sex toys. Um, and I don't know when, what your release date is, but maybe we'll be the same week. I'm not sure. But yeah. the sex toy thing for me has been something that I've been proud of, but I've been in relationships with people who are threatened by it. And mm -hmm. my current partner has zero shaming or, or, or is zero threatened, like zero threat about sex mm -hmm. toys. And I, is the, one of the first times where I feel 
fully safe to like, if I want to use the vibrator, I'm going to use it again and again and again, and then be like, yeah. I'm not done. I'm going to use it again. Yeah. I can totally do that. And they're stoked. And they, cause they're yeah. not take, making it personal about them. They're right. not like your partner is so oh, amazing no. though. He'll say something nice to me. I'll be like at yoga with him. And he's like, I was like, Oh my God, I feel so sweaty. He's like, it must be hard to look that good. I'm like, oh, damn it. I'm like, it's so nice. like, I'm like I mean, well, he's, he's amazing. And he's he a really lover of people yeah. and like building people up and loves building women up. Like, and, mm-hmm. and letting you know that you're amazing. What and is, awesome. Wait, what's that shirt he has? I'm didn't mean to interrupt you. Cause sure. but that he has a shirt that says like, Oh, uh, uh worship state. No, worship state. Satan respect women yeah yeah <laughs> he doesn't worship Satan, but he's just like it's a fucking it's it. just another wonderful entity depends on how you look at it and but there's something really freeing about it someone who's not making it personal you know not like right oh you used to do this yeah. you did this here this must be about us or you're not a good person or i right. must be broken instead like again we said on your show pleasure is pleasure right yeah yeah and also confusing the ways that we need to show up regarding pleasure can just be that like I was confused, lost, misled. And I'm, I, you know, and I'm obviously telling you because I want something different and uh, yeah. want to work with you on it. Yeah. Yeah. And I love this point. And I think that I got to a place where I realized if he does leave me for this, that's okay. Right. Because I, I'm no longer willing to to do this. And so I have to share it with him. If he, his ego is so bruised or something that he leaves me, that's okay. Then, then I know who he is, <laughs> right? It's like that, that like I, I can accept that risk mm-hmm. um, because my, I'm valuing my, I'm learning to value my, my pleasure. Yeah. And I think that's so, so important because I, before I was just valuing wanting him to feel good about himself or, you know, his pleasure or, you know, anything other than, than my (laughs) pleasure and my experience. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So that's about faking orgasms. So when it comes to tips about people's sex lives and they want to really ignite that desire and make sure that it's on, you know, it's on fleek, it's, it's going (laughs) off. Uh, do you have top tips and tools? And if there's one that you can really vamp up that feeds into another, this is multiple, multiple layers here, which, mm-hmm. which should they do? I don't mean should, but which yeah. one would, would you all choose? Well, and on, and piggybacking on that, like, so, cause we were 16 we were talking, questions in one, Well, we were yeah. talking a little bit about the business and sex. And so like, yeah. if I vamp up my sex life, does that vamp up my business world or vice versa? Mm-hmm. You know, if I like lead oh, yeah. a life by desire in one of those facets, can it like turbocharge the other ones? Yeah, totally. Yeah. A lot of questions. Sorry. No, not mutually no, exclusive, no, exclusive, you they, got my back. They're not mutually exclusive. They're not mutually exclusive, but they can be correlated for sure. So um, this is this is great. All right. A lot I, of things I, I could I, say. I have one coming up right away. <laughs> yeah, great. What yeah. you would say. But my, w- one of my biggest tips is like trying to do things or date people or whatever it looks like for you that is outside of your typical preferences. So I think this is a big place where people can get stuck is like, again, it's the checklist. It's the like image in our head of how things should be. And um, for me, it just opened up a lot. Like my husband was not in my preferences. Like he's 14 years older than me. He was like, you know, this like kind of bad boy. It's just like not what I pictured my like husband would be, but he really lit my pussy up. So, <laughs> and, and she's and, important. And she's important. Mm-hmm. Yes. She's important. She was starting, so, Ellie was starting to listen to her and, and yeah, she and is it, very and important. Really let she's, she has led me right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And same with my career. Like oh, I yeah. had this total, like it looked great on social media and it was like what my parents approved of, but it was not what my soul really wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, and so as soon as I started like, yeah, just following what actually felt resonant and mm-hmm. and good and, and listening to those invitations, like Amy saying, do you want to lead a retreat? Yeah. Yeah. And I would say like, so we, we, we don't really give tips like the way I love all your tips. So this, this is why it's so great. Cause it, cause we have such a different flavor and such beautiful, um, wisdom to, to share. And we don't really share tips in the same way of like, okay, like stroke the cock this way, or like, you know, do this. But I mean, of course we have those like things that have worked for us and things. Right. But, um, one of the kind of principles that we learned that we really practice and, and preach is feel over formula. 
And so even though we could give you a formula, right, of like ways to give a great blowjob or ways to, you know, have self-pleasure and and how to squirt, things like that. Um, and certainly that there is absolute value in that and it's super helpful. It's just not what we practice. It's not our, it's not our um expertise. Our expertise is around teaching women to really practice feeling, feeling into what do they want? What would turn them on? And then practicing being courageous enough to share it. And so to me, truth is the best aphrodisiac, right? Telling, telling the truth, sharing your true desire, sharing the thing that turns you on, even if it is excruciating or humiliating or terrifying to let leave your lips, right? To just be willing to try it, even without saying it or express it to a partner is there's so much intimacy in that. And they might be a yes or a no, right? And then being able to stick around and communicate about it and negotiate about it, right? Our teachers say, say um, ask for your, your desire all the way out, all the way, the biggest desire all the way out and stick around to negotiate. And so being willing to follow these whispers of desire, the things that turn you on or your put make your pussy tingle or your cock or, you know, your genitals, turn your genitals on. It's like, oh, follow that, be willing and courageous to follow that, even if it's something that your mind or head is judging. And that's where, that's where the turn on is. I'm speaking specifically around sex, right? But I mean, and in life, like follow the thing that you feel, Ooh, there's ignition there. There's fire there. There's, Ooh, there's sensation there. Oh, Oh, Ooh. Okay. I got to follow this. I got to follow this. This feels good. And so following that in bed and in life and in business, we run our business from desire, Fully, and we are willing to completely scrap things, completely change things. We're changing our highest priced program right now. We're changing completely to different dates, different months, and different locations in the world. And these and women have paid for it, right? Now, obviously, we are responsible for the impact if like it's no longer works for them or anything. Like we work with them, of course, but what I'm pointing to here is that we, we follow what feels true and what feels aligned and what we're turned on by. And we know and trust that that will be for the highest for our business, for our clients, for our lovers, for our partners. And, and that will ultimately bring more pleasure to everybody. Mm -hmm. I love the, uh, the, well, I just want to come back to the pussy, but I love the yeah. pussy, but I love, I love the, like following the, the, the breadcrumbs or the, of the intuition and following the thread, because I, I agree that it's really powerful, but mm -hmm. I have a question, uh, which is a little sim similar to what we were talking about earlier. So fear of the power of the pussy. Uh -huh. What if my partner or future partners feel threatened by my badassery and my pussy? <laughs> so good. Don't fear the pussy. Yeah. <laughs> That's the advice. Just don't fear the pussy. No, that was my no, advice. That was not that. That was me. <laughs> it's been my experience that even when my husband is maybe initially confronted by the things that I want, <laughs> which happens <laughs> quite often, More often in the beginning of our relationship, it Less, still happens because yeah. I'm a desirous woman and have big desires and a big appetite and. Um, you know, this, this comes up and I think it's, I think that I just want to say is it's really normal. I think there's this thing in our culture where it's like, oh, if he can't get on board or if he, you know, is intimidated, like dump him. Mm -hmm. And I just don't subscribe to that at all. I'm like, women are so fucking powerful and it, intimidating at times. If we're really in our expression and in our full desire, like, I can understand a dude being, you know, intimidated by that or anyone and, or anyone. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, but, but in my experience and from the, the women that I've worked with and the, the, the men that, that their, their partners, um, if it's a true desire that really comes from your soul and not your head, not your ego, it really is for the highest good of everyone involved. I have seen that over and over again in my own life, in my friends' lives, in my clients' lives. You can trust it. And so it will, it may disrupt 
the patterns that you're in with people, especially if you've been a people pleaser, you've been, um, you know, like rescuing your partner and making life like comfortable for them, which a lot of people do, you know, myself included, I get into that pattern. And then you start to, you know, share desires that might be edgy for them or might, you know, be new. It can absolutely bring up feelings for everyone yeah. involved. But we, we talk about holding your desire, like being willing to hold the sensation of it, the tension of it. The, yeah. The, the, right. The tension that it might bring up mm -hmm. and again, trusting that there's a reason you have this desire. Like this is pulling you forward into becoming the next version of you and rising the other people in your life along with you. And if you can see it that way and hold it, people come around. There's one other thing I want to add to this, which is just that if someone is having a reaction to your desire, it's so okay, right? And it's mm -hmm. so normal. And it's part of the practice of living a desire-led life. Living your life led by desire is being willing to be with, and like Ellie said, holding the sensation and holding the tension in your body that might arise, being with people's reactions, what comes up for them. And it's a whole other practice to continue to hold the desire in the face of their maybe trauma response or fear or limiting belief or a wound from the past getting activated, right? And being able to fully have reverence for that process and be okay with their no, right? So it doesn't mean mm -hmm. living a desire love life doesn't just mean you get all your desires, right? And a big part of our work also is working with women around where the shadow side of a desire led life, which is one, one element, one aspect is that it can tip into entitlement, right? We're like, well, I'm living a desire led life. So I should just be able to have everything all the time, whenever I want it. Right. And that energy also doesn't really produce erotic energy with your partner, right? Or your friends when you're in this kind of like demanding energy. Right. And so it's also being able to have a reverence for the other person's no, or their process or needing time, right? Or negotiating something different and being able to not shame or suppress or cast your desire aside, right? Just because somebody might have a different opinion or want something different. It's like, can you hold it and love it and own it? Even if they are a no, or you might not actually act on it. Well, the pussy seems to be in charge of a lot of stuff over here on all levels. <laughs> she really is. Or the <laughs> She's shaking shit up. So, that, and, I, and I really love all of the info, the, the downloads that I'm receiving from you. I, I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm like drawing it in, like I'm uploading something to my drive. Yes. So how can my pussy build a seven-figure business from this, okay? <laughs> the way yours have. Please yes. share, okay? I want all of it. Not tips, because, I okay, but I right. want to know. <laughs> Ideas? Ideas, yes. <laughs> Nothing against tips. Just want to be clear, but uh, we love tips. Wow. How did we do it? <laughs> That's a whole other podcast episode, but here, I mean, well, just very simple. Well, yeah. Too. I mean, there's a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the biggest thing that I'll say is we really tuned in to what kind of business model we wanted. Yeah. So we looked at a lot of different things, you know, in the kind of year or two leading up to um, what we, what we found, which I'll, which I'll tell you. But we, we were like, you know, oh, these like online business things and like ads and just none of it turned us on. None of it made us wet. It was just like, mm, not just, it, not it. And we, we live this work. So we were like, we're not going to do something that feels boring and, you know, like not full. Yeah. Off. Yeah. And so, so we waited and, um, and in 2019, we, we met our, our, um, now our, our coaches that we worked with for many years who, who teach a, an events business model. And it's so us, it's so us. And we just, our whole dream was like to be on stage, to speak to hundreds, someday thousands of women. We, I, I was, I studied theater in school. Like Amy's born to be on stage. Like we <laughs> love it. We love like getting dressed up in the outfits. We love bringing women together. We love building our favorite, community. bringing so women together. When we saw this, we were like, this is us. Us. This is our desire. Yeah. Like, this is so exciting to us. Like 
we would do anything, right? None of it feels like work because even though we work really hard, you know, we work our butts off, but it doesn't feel like work to do what we're doing. Now, there are aspects of the business that do feel like work and feel heavy. And we do our best to delegate and to off, you know, to hire people who that is their zone of genius. Or make it, or we do it and do our best to make it pleasurable for ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So there's just things that we just have to do, right? As business owners and with clients that are not necessarily the most pleasurable. And so if we can have like delegate to our team, we do, but otherwise, like we just had two of our team members fly in and we did a two day immersion of just work for, for two days, planning our upcoming four retreats. So much more fun than doing it alone or right. So just finding ways to have it be more pleasure. And we had, you know, a six month training last year that was like all these calls on zoom, you know, and all, and like, it was a really transformational program, but it, we didn't, weren't turned on about doing it again. So we were like, okay, well, what would we be, you know, what would we be excited about doing? And so we're doing the same program, but instead of six months with Zoom calls, it's two five-day in-person intensives because that's what we love to do. And so we're able, you know, it's like just looking at all around at our business and how can we make this pleasurable? How can we make it exciting to us? Like, even if it's crazy, even if it's like, we, but what we we're not going to do that, do that <laughs> profitable six month program again, that like made a big difference and people liked it. No, we're not because we, we don't want, it feels <laughs> off. It feels off. And, and what else could we create? That's like, you know, it feels like a dream yeah. would feel like a dream for us to do. And, and what we're always asking ourselves is like, how easy can it be? How easy because can we let it be? We like to make things hard, right? That's like the human, right? It's like, we like to make things hard. And all of a sudden we're like hating the business and feeling overwhelmed and all this stuff. And so in those moments, we're like, okay, how, where are we making this harder than it needs to be? How easy can this be? And um, what do we need to change? It's yeah. an indication when it feels hard and like challenging and it's like uphill, we're like, something's off. And so that's when we really tune in, right? Feel over formula, even if it's scrapping something, even if it's changing something, even if it's n- like, wait, we might not be profitable anymore. That's fine. Cause we are focused on our clients and our transformation and their transformation over money all days, every day. And of course we want to be profitable, but it's like, we are willing to not make the money in order to have an on business right? That is our, that is our priority. But the secret is that when it feels on, when it feels good, when we're having fun, it's profitable. Not the natural extension of that is more profit and abundance. Have you thought about what you're wearing on stage next? Like, have you thought about a costume? that's like Wolverine. (laughs) (laughs) We actually throw it out there. Wolverine. We've been saying it's a mixture between a vulva and a Wolverine. It's a Wolverine. We said that in like our first 10 episodes. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. I'm just throwing it that. out there or just like a clitoris and outer <gasps> labia. Does a Wolverine always have a lot of pubic hair? No, it doesn't have to. That's what I would be. Whatever. I'm just like, you can stage stuff like, because I love theater and I'm like, I love like thinking about costumes and I just oh my God. And came to me again, but I'm yeah, like, you don't have I to do that. that. You're way more creative we, than we me love theater than too. I am. We are not so much thinking about our costumes, but we are okay. thinking that this year we want to sing. Ooh, yeah. awesome. we, love yeah. like, we want to sing we both sing this. and we love singing like at home and to the baby and, and like, you know want to get a voice coach and like really get a song dialed in and sing it together because it's, it's so fun part of our favorite expression we love singing naturally just like around the house it's so in our pleasure we love singing musicals and going to musicals like we love it and we're like we should incorporate this. This is part of our self-expression. This is part of our pleasure and it's total permission, right? See, that is desire on fire right there. Yes. Like you're taking a desire to do something that you maybe feel uncomfortable with, yes. or maybe you feel comfortable with on your own. And that I think in a nutshell is what you all are doing. You're setting something and making it beautiful. And that is, I, 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 I love what you've shared and mm. how you've shared it. So thank you. And I'm just going to throw a Wolverine out there one more time. <laughs> Wolverine. It and is, then, 
Noted. <laughs> yes, noted. Yeah, and then take photos and send it to us, please. Yes, please. Yeah, so, have some pussy Halloween costumes. Yeah. yeah last, last year, our event was on Halloween. What a missed opportunity. What a missed opportunity. Us. We would have helped Next out. time. Oh, oh, okay, well, yes. now we know you. If so, you need creative God. insight, call me. We'll be, I always have a lot of shit. Amy too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my oh, my God. God. Yes. God. Yes. We, and Amazing. someone's going to love it. I mean, I would love it. It's going to be great. Yeah. I would be obsessed. Yeah. I'd be like, we're you're coming home with me consensually, and we're going to hang out. Come to the Wolverine amazing. retreat. Like, all of what's happening is amazing. <laughs> so, so with that, on the note of your retreats, so yes, <laughs> on, the, uh, on you coming home, with uh, us. yes, no, <laughs> on you. Well, this is not the ultimate desire, and if not, then that's cool too. Um, uh, so, can you tell us about your mini offerings and, and elaborate on the retreats a little bit, and then how people can find you, work with you? This includes social handles, websites. Like, how can people hunt you down? Your podcast, all the things. Yeah. Well, uh, so we have three accounts on Instagram. Desire on Fire is the easiest because it's our company and community account. And then Ellie and I each have our own individual accounts at Amy Batuski and at Ellie Montgomery. Very easy to find. It's just our names. And you can find us through the Desire on Fire account. We have our own podcast, as you know, because you were just on it. And it will be coming out probably around the same time as this episode. Um, It's just called the Desire on Fire podcast, desireonfire.com. All the things are Desire on Fire. So if you just look up Desire on Fire, you're going to find us. And we have so much exciting stuff coming up this year. Yeah. And our big, our next big event will be in the fall, but we'll have like lots of fun, free classes, virtual events things happening over the next few months. So just follow us on Instagram is the best way to find out. Yeah. Fall and if of anyone, 2023, fall of 2023, everyone, right? Fall of 2023. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And it's happening in Austin this year because we just moved to Austin. So the, our big event, it's called the Desire on Fire Experience. It is fucking epic. We've had, yeah, around 300 women last few years. And it's just so fun and confronting in the best ways and transformational. And it's just so much juicy sisterhood. It's the best. So yeah, certainly would love to have everybody listening there um, who has a vulva. Love to have you. And um, sorry, everybody else. We love you too. Um, and yeah, we do have other retreats and things this year, but they're only for our like graduates of our programs already. So um, the best way to get involved is um, you know online and then at our big event in fall. Sweet. And if that's over Halloween, let us know because I'm going to show up with an interesting costume. We will. We're I'm working on the date. So Marie okay. will have is, her moment. Is, I have is, a vision. Is Vicarina thing too? Can I be no, a No, It's going to have some no. other thing. We're going to have Vickery? a different thing. No, Wait, it'll, be like a, it'll be like a cockatoo. Vickery, a cockatoo. Vickery. A cockatoo. Yeah. A cockatoo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. A, oh, yeah. yeah. Cockatoo, they'll do. Oh, <laughs> no. It'd be like a cock, like you dress up like, you a, like a rooster and then you have a big peace sign. So it's like a cockatoo. I don't know. What oh. <laughs> okay. You are Very creative. far more creative than I am She's in this good. arena. <laughs> and many, I'm sure. And I could be hired for children's birthday parties <laughs> and any events and you have. That's her ultimate desire, right? She wants to lead a lot. Follow that one. Definitely no, follow that one, April. That definitely, is. definitely will. But yes, um, I am not a clown yet, but I might go to clown school. I actually would love to because I want to learn how to juggle really fucking bad. So uh, you rock it. That being said, yeah. don't go, don't go anywhere. Thank you. Everyone listen to this podcast because I'm not going to should you, but if you have the ability to use your fingers or your voice activated phone right now, if this is 2042, you might be able to be like calling in Amy Butuski, Ellie Montgomery, come in. I want you on my ears. Are you being a robot so, right now? Yeah, okay. I am. <laughs> so we want to and listen to the Desire on Fire podcast because they, you really have set my desire on fire, not only to make Wolverine, Wolverine costumes uh, and uh, in, be inspired to juggle with only three objects, but I also know that uh, you just fabulous humans and thank you for sharing your gifts with all of our listeners and with us mm -hmm. and yes i feel like uh I, I don't know i just adore you both and i hope i get to meet you in person soon but oh we love that anyway, this is Such great. A pleasure. we love austin so. yes well, we do oh, come on over let come us know I'm, I'm about to go to bali for a month but when i'm back we are i we, so happy we to love have bali you. we do <laughs> we might come to, <laughs> to you in bali yes we're just welcome. gonna jump in <laughs> welcome to meet me there we're just inviting ourselves <laughs> yes we, yes we are so so, uh, so thank you to you both. Uh, we, we adore you and to all of our listeners, we absolutely love you too. So yeah, I just want to say if you don't love Wolverines and that's okay too, because you set my desire right on fire. And, uh, 
I I just love you. I really do. Amy, how often do we talk about our listeners and how much she cries a lot? I know out of joy and and love. I don't cry often, but when I think about I I love you all and thank you for being part of the shameless sex revolution. And one invitation is just write rate us if you have a second. You can just you can put an emoji. Someone put in a squirrel emoji today with five stars. And I have ADHD and I squirrel out often. So that was perfect (laughs) for me because I was like, thank you for being really pointed and calculated with that emoji. Thank you. And you can do that. You can write us a paragraph, a sentence. Five stars just helps people find more wonderful humans. This is a free resource for you. Like the Desire on Fire podcast folks, as well as all of the amazing educators and scholars. And I'm speaking of scholars. Stay tuned because we have Sluts and Scholars (gasps) podcast trailer coming after this. Yeah. But I have one last piece and I feel like I'm long winded, but it's not going to be winded. It's just going to be long. Um, I love you. That's it. Amy, (laughs) what about Sluts and Scholars podcast trailer? I love you. Me. Well, I love you too, Chip. We love all our listeners. We love the Desire on Fire ladies podcast entity, uh, pussy throbbing business. Um, And yeah, we're just really stoked to have you on here and what you're doing. And then go check out our episode on their show as well. So you can like all of our wonderful podcasts. And okay, so Sluts and Scholars. Thank you for repeating everything I said because she doubled it up. Yeah, Yeah, I got to double up. She's the vulva, I'm the reen. Yeah, or I'm the cockadoodle-doo. And uh, for the Sluts and Scholars podcast, uh, so they have been on our show. Now it's just she just, oh she's now been on she show. wasn't they now she um meaning two people now it's one and nicoletta is awesome um and we recorded we were in new york i think right she's a doctor yeah she's a therapist right she's, she's a therapist yeah. she's incredible and she's tons of fun and her podcast is amazing so it's called sluts and scholars and it's part of the pleasure podcast network the wonderful network that we are part of with a bunch of awesome sex positive podcasts and everyone has a different offering a different niche and so everyone is wonderful go check them out and um, uh, without further ado, are you all ready to hear a trailer, a teaser, a teaser? Let's get slutty and scholarly Ooh, at the same time. Here we mm. go. 